What's different about a motorhead crowd in South America compared to other places? It's the same, except there's usually more of them in South America, you know, big crowds out down here. You know, people don't realize anywhere else in the world, they don't realize what it's like here, you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And, and like when you get 54,000 people going motorhead and doing the football chant, it's magical, you know, I mean, there's nothing like that. Down here, it's really, you know, fuck me, they're going super hard on what they like, you know, and, and, and help, you know, you, you might as well pack up and run unless you're ready to, to deliver for these guys, you know. It's the kind of music that they can aspire to do themselves, right? You might call it three-chord bullshit, but it isn't, you know. There's just as much craft in making a three-chord song sound different from all the other three-chord songs as there is in writing a 25-chord song, you know. Yeah. It's like the passion is, is most of it, actually. Yeah. And the volume, you know. Because volume's very important, I think. And we're good, you know. I mean, we're a fucking good band. We deserve success. I don't care, you know. We're right. very, it's not false modesty. I, I got no false modesty. Yeah. I have a certain amount of real modesty, but I don't let it show much. Fuck them, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud of what I've done. I asked Lem for his autograph when I was 12. <laughs> I've still got it at home on the on the programme when he was with Hawkwind. So if somebody said to me that night, you're going to be in a big band with this guy for over a quarter of a century, I would have said, you're crazy. Well, we've been... Together a long time, us three now, you know, I mean, we've got it down pretty well, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, we all have our roles to play, we all do that, you know. It's pretty, I wouldn't say it's mechanical, but it is a machine. We're not qualified to do much else, and it's, it's a lot of fun, and we, we enjoy kicking out the music. You know, you might get tired after a long tour, but after three weeks, we're just dying to get back on the road. We're three very different dudes, <laughs> which I think is good, you know, because we, we have different interests and different ways about us that helps out a lot and and you know we've been doing this for so long all of us i'm sure there's tension there's fights and there's you know nagging going on sometimes and all you can do is try to solve it you know in a good manner you know uh, I, I don't know everyone's different you know lem lem likes to read a lot and he's got his ipad there now and stuff mickey does his keep fit stuff and um, he likes to get his booty sleep a lot you know and uh, i try to fuck about try to play as many pranks on people as I can. You have to give and take, you know, you have to compromise because we're all, we're all different personalities, so sometimes someone will really get on your tits, but you have to compromise a bit, you know, you have to realise, OK, that's the way they are. Does someone play the peacekeeper? Does someone play the... the oh, no, I mean... We, does we, it, does, are there those dynamics in the band? No, we don't bother with that anymore, we just fight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, you see, the great thing about a three-piece is always a casting vote. What are the advantages of di uh, and disadvantages of being a, a three-piece band? Well, the advantage is you get more money, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, there's always, like I said, a casting vote, and uh, I think you, you have to play harder if you're a three-piece. There's nobody to lean on, you know. You're yeah. the only one of you in the band, right, so you have to do, uh, you have to do everything in your power. How would you characterize uh, the personalities of Phil and, and Mickey? How are they... How are Abrasive. They <laughs> Same as mine. You have to sublimate that to the to the whole, you know. Yeah. I mean, the first thing a band has to learn, and it's the most vital thing in the world, is tolerance of other people. Because when you're on a bus with two other people, or three, or four or five other people, you know, in some bands, that little thing that they do that irritates you, by the end of the tour, it's huge. You know, you're ready to stab them with the fucking bread knife. You know. So you've got to get rid of that, you know, yeah. you've got to cut that down. And some people can't do that. And some people don't like travelling, you know. It's like a lot of different factors, you know. To be in a band, you have to be a special kind of animal, you know. What? It's like running away during the circus, you know, it used to be. Yeah. Or during the army a long time ago, you know, you'd run away and join the army underage, wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, to get away. Do you, do you see yourself as a nomad? As kind a of, yeah. Well, well, home is where you leave your shit, you know. I mean, it's, it's not... This is where I live. This and a thousand other rooms like it, you know. Yeah. Are you more comfortable on the move than, than, than being in one place? Yes, I suppose you could use comfortable. In fact, I'm more used to it, you see. I'm more used to being moving. You know? Yeah. I mean, we used to do a lot more shows than we do now. We only do two in a day off now. We used to do five in a day off. And before that, it was like 20, you know. Yeah. So we, uh, we cut down a bit because of my advanced stage, you know, but apart from that, I'm still, I still like the road, you yeah. know. 
Well, it all sort of rolls into one tour. We don't sort of get much time off. Basically, I've been touring for 27 years, basically. Uh, but it's great. To, to, we try to keep it the same crew as much as possible, so it's like a family. You like everything being on the road. You know, it's uh, it's so fun to be in the bus at the hotels, on stage, uh, the nightclub in. You know, I mean, the whole thing, you know, the, even the fights I like sometimes, you know. Why do you like to tour? I don't know, it's because it's different every day, you know, I like a bit of variety, you know, it's the spice of life apparently. Yeah. And uh, there's all these different girls, you know, that you run into. It's great fun, especially down there, beautiful girls down there, yeah. I mean, other bands I've interviewed describe the tedium of being on the road. Well, it, do that's because they're fucking tedious people. <laughs> So how do you keep it from not being? I have hobbies. Well, you know, there's always women to chase, isn't there? And there's always, like, something interesting to go look at. There's always something, you know. I mean, you can get, sit in your fucking dressing room and play Angry Birds like I was tonight, you know. I mean, you got to keep yourself occupied. If you sit staring at the bloody wall, it's going to be tedious, isn't it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Write letters home, you know. How important is humour on the road? For Massive. I mean, it's it's. Uh, this is like I, I, we, I said this for years. You know that we are like Spinal Tap with no script. Oh, without you, you might as well go home. You know. No, oh, you'd go insane otherwise, wouldn't you? If you? You know, you couldn't you couldn't do it for this long without you know enjoying enjoying it and having fun. You couldn't do it to be total manic depressive or you just kill everyone or you'd kill yourself. Or... Um, any particularly humorous? Moments on the road that you can recall. Yeah. Well, I, I rode a horse on stage with Testament and uh, Metal Masters of Metal, Metal Masters, a couple of years ago. I was dressed in a shocking blue wig and a dress that Ronnie Dio gave me. That's a Keith Moon esque prank, that is. That's worthy of Mooney. I mean, we did a uh, first Mickey went on with one of the Mexican suits with the mule where it's your legs, you know. Yeah. Oh boy, you know, no, he went on first with the sombrero and the moustache and then fell on the horse with the dress on that Ronnie G Dio bought him and the purple wig and then I come up behind just as an Arab with the towel and the black tape and the shades sweeping up behind the horse, you know. <laughs> and we went out there and we came back again and Chuck Billy said over the mic, he said, I'll never top this, he said. There <laughs> <laughs> was some effort put into this one, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but that's what makes it fun, you know. This is the shit you will always remember, you know. Walk across the stage with this half tranquilized horse, you know. I heard he was valium, valiumed up pretty good <laughs> to, to be able to, you know, he was a calm horse anyway, and we didn't want to harm no, no animals. And we were asking the girl a lot of times, you know, can the horse deal with this, you know? Oh, no problem. But it was given some values, I think, <laughs> before. So why pull it, why, why go to such lengths to, uh, to, to, to dress up and this stuff and actually go to these lengths on the road? Because I'm crazy, I guess. <laughs> so that's what I like to do, you know. So, so these days it's so business-like, you know, and I try to keep it like in the old days, you know, we've got to have fun, you know, and last, if you've been on tour for a long time with the bands, you've got to, you've got to fuck about on the last, the last gig. That's the way I see it. What What do you hope Motorhead fans get out of seeing you guys live? Satisfaction, you know, uh, proof of uh, that we are as simple and as complex as we say we are, and we said that we are for so many years. And there's really no cheating behind our show or our albums or our performance in any way, shape or form. Yeah, I hope they get, you know, a charge out of it. I hope it makes them feel 10 feet tall for a couple of hours, you know. I hope they go home a wiser but deafer person, you know. <laughs>